Hello, I'm Edward Fillion. This month's suggested theme is Listen to Your Heart. And here, heart means that divine something that resides at the center of your being. Some call that the soul. May's suggested theme ideas from Centers for Spiritual Living are provided by the Minister's Council, Reverends Sunny Cantrell Smith, Andriette Earl, Sunday Cote, Stacy Hilton, Karen Fry, and Dr. Harry Morgan Moses. Here is their point of view for May. There is an inner divine urge, a purposefulness of spirit that resides within each of us at all times, our soul, and it has the ability to know what it wants. Imagine that with me, that there is such a divine urge within you and it knows what it wants. Not only that, but the more you and I become aware of it, and listen to it, the more our lives become a reflection of the holy splendor that lives in us. Our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, said that understanding our unity with the divine is the beginning of wisdom. You may be sure of this, our founder also said, that there is an integrity to your soul such as you will find nowhere else in the universe. And so I invite you this month on a spiritual journey to rediscover what your heart, your soul, wants to express through you for the greater good of all. And I invite you to begin or to continue a regular practice of listening to its gentle and powerful message. There is a good reason why the words heart and soul are sometimes used interchangeably. It's a clue as to the nature of what is at the center of our beings. Love, a love that embraces, includes, affirms, and nurtures. Uh, when we listen to that voice, surely we will take our place in the world as ambassadors for compassion, inclusion, sharing, forgiveness, and service. My blessings to you.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning service at the Center for Spiritual Living in Redlands, California. We are so excited that you have joined us this morning. My name is Holly Bocanegra, and I am a member of the Board of Trustees. Our theme for the month of May is Listen to Your Heart. Once again, we are very grateful that you have come to join us this morning, and please enjoy the service. It's in every one of us. Hi, good morning everybody. My name is Brother Mark and I'm one of the licensed practitioners with CSL Redlands and we welcome you to our Sunday morning service. It's so good to be in the backyard garden where you may be able to hear the birds in the background know that they're singing just for you. And so today's topic and we're starting a new month so May, May's theme is listen to your heart. That'll be the monthly theme, listen to your heart. And the weekly theme is the seat of the soul. And when I first read that, I was like, what, what does that mean? It did not make very much sense to me. And so I read through some of the notes and I'm going to put it in a language that worked for me. I'm hoping that it'll work for you and meet you right where you are. So the basic idea is that we, when we recognize the power and presence that is within our soul, we are in spiritual alignment. And so many times I've said that our teaching, the science of mind is a beautiful reminder of the truth about who and what I am and the truth about who and what you are. You are God's beloved in whom God is well pleased. You are perfect, whole, complete. You are a masterpiece of the divine. There is nothing missing. There is nothing lacking. There is nothing needing nor wanting in you. And this is the truth. And so it is like uh, a spiritual chiropractic. You know, some of us go to a chiropractor when our spine feels out of alignment, right? And you, you sometimes hear a <coughs> and maybe you feel better. And whenever you go to spiritual centers such as CSL, Centers for Spiritual Living Worldwide, any place that feeds your soul, 
you are being properly seated to your soul, meaning you're being reminded of the I am that I am. You are just simply being adjusted <laughs> back to your spiritual nature. And I kind of like the idea of the, the seat of the soul, because if I could, and I had one, I would have brought a big throne, right? A huge, huge throne. And when you sit in a huge throne, what is, what do you normally see? Well, you normally see the back of the chair or the throne as tall, very tall. It usually extends past the head and very ornate. And this is the truth about us. It forces us, the throne is a symbol. It forces us to sit up straight. And I love that idea because if you know that you have to sit up straight, right? Then everything can flow through you with uh, a divine order and harmony, a balance, a wisdom. You can allow for the intelligence of the universe to use you. There's that beautiful Ricky Byer song. It's a lyric and the title. Use me. Let's just say that at home together. Use me. Show me. Guide me. Command my hands. What must they do? Command my life. It's here for you. Right? And so it's that idea. The seed of the soul is that idea. And it might be different for each of us as to what it is each of us needs or wants to be reminded of our spiritual truth and our spiritual nature. It might be a little different for me than you. Some of you may be artists, so you must create your art. If you're a singer, you're meant to sing. That's how spirit works in, through, and as your life. If you are a artist with uh, paints or brushes or pencil, you must create masterpieces. <laughs> that, is, that is your way you express your divinity, right? So whatever your talents, or if you're still seeking your talents, allow them to be made manifest even more, even greater at this time. All of this is a time for us to be, become even more keenly aware of our, our spiritual magnificence, our spiritual perfection, our essence, our true identity. I'm encouraging everyone, every time I speak on camera, I'm saying, hey, this is a worldwide wake-up call right here, right now, to, to, find, to find this seat of the soul. Because it may look like we're all individualized particles. It may look like we're not connected. And the truth is, this whole time of stillness is a perfect reminder that we are one until all of us are safe none of us are safe until all of us are safe none of us are safe and so what's the big deal about wearing a mask think of it as a courtesy to your fellow human and that's a pretty basic premise. It's a pretty basic idea. And yet you'll see, you'll see on TV all over the news. Leader number two goes into a clinic, no mask. So we have still a ways to go as a species to be able to just allow for common courtesy, right? Never mind the health consequences of it. But just for common courtesy, like to say that I will wear a mask to protect you. It also protects me. And at the same time, it protects you. What is wrong with us loving someone we don't know in that way by showing courtesy, by showing respect, by showing human decency, which is really what this boils down to. And... Maybe it's a time for the human race to see if we ever really will or could or can or shall have common sense. <laughs> I think it's a good starting point to pray about 
common sense to come forth in this time, for the wisdom, for the wisdom of all of our ancestors who always surround us, uh, for our highest and best good to have their voices heard in our soul now. For we can change our mind at any point in time. And by the changing of our mind, we can be renewed and restored and refreshed and reinvigorated and then have a different outcome as our life. What does it say over the doors of our spiritual center as you walk into it at 602 North Church Street? From the lobby to the sanctuary, it says, change your thinking, <laughs> change your life. And this is true. And so it really, this idea of the seed of the soul could be a simple one too. It is deep, it is complex, and it can also be simple. What works for you to find your spiritual adjustment, to realize that your soul is not separate from you, that everything, when you're seated properly and aligned properly, can work through you more divinely? Who wouldn't want that? Everybody would want that. Raise your hand at home if you want to experience more of your divinity. Ah, I see a lot of you raising your hands at home, so that's cool. And so one of the things I always do when, when I get a, the opportunity and the honor of speaking with you is to check out usually right in the back of the Science of Mind text in the index. And I just pulled out soul and it appears on page 633 and I'm just going to read it. I'm going to take it kind of slow because it has a lot of depth to it. Soul is the creative medium of the spirit. And I love that. And in our teaching symbol, you remember the circle and then it has a V within the circle. And spirit is everything, and it's spirit, soul, and body, right? So the idea is that, our, that everything comes from spirit, and within the soul is kind of like the, if you were using the, the um, euphemism of a garden, would be the dirt or the, the ground or the soil, right? And then the bottom is the, the uh, body or the form or the effect. And so once the idea of the spirit takes root in the soil, it must manifest, right? So if we plant an apple seed, usually we get an apple tree, right? And so it's that idea that it always works. And this is also another time where we're, we can be very mindful to see that nature is not toiling now. I'm gonna, if I was doing a mathematical formula right now for you, I would say uh, nature equals divinity with a capital D Divinity with a capital D equal sign nature with a capital N. And what we're talking about today, the seed of your soul, is really just you being willing to consider your spiritual nature more. This idea of the power of the aligned soul to create something even more magnificent than you may be experiencing in your life at this very moment in time. And what is wrong with that? And so back to the definition of soul from page 633 the creative medium of spirit the subjective side of, of life the mirror of mind for it reflects the forms of thought which are given it wow <laughs> that's like a mic drop right it re reflects the forms that are given it wow so if you don't like what you're experiencing in your life all we have to do is change what we're putting in to the mirror of our life. For the universe only knows to say Y, E, S, yes. The universe is always going to say yes. And so then it's our job to become seated in our soul to, to be sure that we are always putting the caveat in every one of our prayer treatments that says, let it be this or something greater, let it be for my highest and best good. Let only those things which are meant to propel me upward and to my highest vibration, let those things reach me now. And let anything and everything else not have any power, not even reach you. It can be a phone call, it can be an email, it can be a text. Just because the phone rings, 
doesn't mean you always have to answer it in that very moment in time. Just because you receive an email, if you think it could be a, a difficult email, prepare yourself for that before you open it. We don't have to perpetuate violence on ourselves just because we are technologically capable. Back to the definition. Man's soul life reenacts the soul life of the universe. Soul is subjective because it takes the thought of conscious mind and acts upon it. Its nature is subjective and it cannot analyze or reject. It can only carry out the orders given it. Infinite in its power and ability to do, but not knowing that it does. And so this is really uh, the first thing that came to me is I'm seeing our practitioner and beloved, uh, who, who is a pillar in our community, Grace. And when she was in the last foundations class, she said, Brother Mark, she said, just always know that when we're releasing our word, our word right, to the, in, in the uh, fifth step of affirmative prayer treatment, we're releasing it to the law. The law always says yes. The law always affirms. And this definition from our Science of Mind text proves it. <laughs> if you ever want to be uplifted and inspired, just grab the index. And if something's coming to you, just take a look at the definitions and it is miraculous. And so it can only carry out the orders given it. It, spirit, the divine intelligence, the universe can only carry out your orders. What are the orders that you're giving it? I think that's well worth our time this Sunday morning. And also carry it past Sunday. What are the orders you are giving it? <clears throat> wow. There's nobody else giving it orders to work in through and as your life. It, can't, it does not work like that. There's nobody giving the universe orders other than you. And because we're frequencies and energy, we can shift our energy at any time. And then we can shift the outcomes at any time. And so I'm asking and inviting and encouraging everyone within the sound of my voice, everyone who clicks on this either to watch while we're doing this uh, talk or later as a replay, what orders are you giving the universe? It's a good question. And if it's not working for you, if something in your life is ready for a redirect, use this time. It's a gift. This time is a huge, huge gift. And I'm encouraging you and inviting you to use it, to redirect the orders that you're giving the universe. Because if you're blaming somebody else, thinking somebody else has control over your orders that only you can give, no. It does not work like that. Think of it. Many times when I speak, I say, I use the idea of the ocean, right? I say we are individualized waves that come crashing on the shore from the sea to the sand, right? And then we are always with, the, with nature and the centrifugal force, we're taken back by the natural current, back into the, the ocean or the greater body. So we all look different as waves when we come. There's no two waves that are ever the same. Some are just a little rippy ripple, you know, right? Uh, they just have little white bubbles that come up on the sand. And some are like a tsunami. Yes, I said tsunami. It feels good to say that word if you want to say it at home. T-S-U-A-M-I. Tsunami. They come in like whoo, a tidal wave, you know, that sucks in everything after they leave. And that's the energy that we are. Some of us come in and it's like a ripple. And some of us come in and they're like, okay, you could surf that wave in Newport or Huntington. 
But some come in like a tsunami and then they take in all the patio furniture, all everything back with them, all the bungalows that were on the beach. You know, that's just how they are. That's just who they are, how they are. That's the power of their particular energy. But the idea is this, we are not separate from that. And guess where we're going back to by nature and by centrifugal force. We're naturally compelled, propelled back to the source of the entire sea. And that's exactly like how this works. The seed of the soul is, I, and this is just my personal opinion, you cannot ignore it. You cannot ignore it. You cannot pretend you don't have it. You were given it as at birth. You were, your DNA is encoded with every single thing that you will ever need right here and right now. There is no other place to turn except for within. There's another Ricky Byers lyric. There's no hitchhiking. Brother Mark, he cannot do the work for you. Any reverend you've ever met, any minister you've ever been to, any motivational speaker you've ever heard from, any of the greatest leaders, they cannot do your work for you. You must do your work for you. And if you agree with that, let's say that at home as an affirmation, I will do my work for me. Okay, say it again. I will do my work for me. And so that's, that's, a, that's the seed of the soul, in, in my opinion. Whew. Did it make sense? If it did, you can leave a comment. And if it didn't, you know, you can send us a private message and we'll reach out and we could have a brief conversation about whatever it is that we can do to support you. That's our job. And it's our pleasure. It's actually our mission is to uh, be part of the global vision of CSL, which is to create a world that works for everyone. And that's the truth. And so uh, there is a, a quote that I really liked, and I'm going to go ahead and, and read that. And this comes from Ralph Waldo Emerson, and it's the Emerson Essays. It's called The Oversoul, and it's page 189. We live in secession, in division, in particles. Meantime, within man is the soul of the whole, the wise silence, the universal beauty, to which every part and particle is equally related, the eternal one. And this deep power in which we exist and whose beautitude is all accessible to us is not only self-sufficing and perfect in every hour, but the act of seeing and the thing seen, the seer and the spectacle, the subject and the object are one. And so I just couldn't love you anymore. Peace and blessings from Brother Mark. What a wonderful world. I see. Shake!
And now it is time for our conscious giving, our time to be a contributor so that if you like what you're seeing, inviting you to become a monetary contributor to CSL Redlands on a weekly basis, a bi-weekly basis, or monthly basis. You can set up auto-tithing by giving us a call, 909-793-3004, or you can go to the website, www.cslredlands.org, and at the very top of our website is a Donate Now button, and that works through PayPal, or there's other links that we'll post in the comments uh, there's one, I think it's Venmo, where we, we can give you a phone number and you can give that way. And there's one, I think, uh, bit.ly link. So there's plenty of ways to give. You can also old-fashioned drop a check in the mailbox, which is a secured mailbox at our center. Or you can mail it to CSL Redlands, 602 North Church Street, Redlands, California, 92374. And so I'm just going to invite us all to turn within. And if you have your tithe or your gift or your offering, inviting you to place it on your heart space. Just know that all source, money is just energy, right? So we can't be afraid to give. For the same portal from which we give, we receive. And so make this portal a bigger space. Make your giving portal a bigger space. The most precious call that I had recently was from uh, one of our um, members named Richard. And he said, Brother Mark, he goes, do you ever ask anybody to give? And how do they give? Because he said, he goes, this is my spiritual tribe. I've looked in a lot of places. I've been to a lot of churches and centers, but this is my spiritual tribe and I want to support it. And I, I almost cried. I was like, wow, wow. So you may get a call from Richard because he's the right person to ask for you to give, right? And we must give freely, meaning don't give out of panic. Don't, don't, don't give because someone told you to give. Give because it's in your heart. Give because it is in your soul. It's in the seat of your soul to be a giver and know that when we give, we're practicing. It's a muscle, just like a bicep is a muscle. It's a giving muscle. And everything is returned back to us, multiplied. And so we take our gift and our tithe and our offering, we place it in our heart space. And I'm going to say an affirmation and ask you if you want to at home, you can repeat it line by line after me. And it goes like this. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and my belief. It does great work in the world. And it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And so... I invite you now to join me for our closing affirmative prayer treatment. And also invite you that if you would like to receive individualized, customized, personalized, a phone call from us, your practitioner core at CSL Redlands has been working for about a month to reach out to those we have email information for and contact information for. And so provide that in a private manner to us or give us a call and we'd be happy to call you. We typically make these reach out calls uh, where we are seeing each other by Zoom, but we don't need to see you by Zoom unless you want to be seen. And we, if we don't get you directly, we'll leave a message for you so that we're knowing the truth about you and you can access that by just listening to the recording and joining in that prayer at any, any time. And so I just invite us all to turn within now if you're home and you're a licensed practitioner or a practitioner, and a minister, stand up, please rise. Know this truth with me now. And so I invite us to turn within by exhaling out everything that's preceded this moment in time, just letting it go with our breathing. And as we inhale in, we inhale in only the divine. 
only God qualities. And we exhale out anything that's a lower vibration, anything that's in the human, anything that may be a lingering doubt or a fear, anything that may have stress or anxiety attached to it, we let it go. And as we breathe in, we're reminded that this power, this, the seed of the soul, I cannot be denied this. It is the truth of me. And it works even greater when I declare and affirm and accept and allow willingly for it to have its full sway in through and as my life. And so I unify with it. I know it is everywhere present. I am one with it. It is the truth of who I am. It is the truth of who you are. And just say at home with me, God is right where I am. God is right where I am. And it is from this place of unity and oneness that I speak a word of blessing for our spiritual center and all those who watch individually and for the world collectively. I see each of you hermetically sealed with divine health and perfect wholeness as your birthright. It is part of the seed of the soul. I call forth for abundance, uh, cash, all those, uh, what are they called? Uh, checks or whatever they're supposed to be that are supposed to come. Ha! Whenever they come, let them come quicker. Let anything that is heretofore blocked, hindered, deferred, denied, or delayed, your highest good, let those things that have, that have deferred it slip away and instead be replaced with the truth that God is at hand, life is at hand, the divine is at hand, right here, right now, always waiting to impress upon us within the seed of our soul for our highest and best good now and always. I'm so grateful to know that any God quality that came to you is exactly what is most needed for your individual soul's perfect evolution and your journey at this moment in time. And so I declare perfect health and wholeness and wealth and joy and abundance and wisdom and grace and creativity and divine right relationships, both romantic and within the family units. I call forth divine right learning. I call forth infinite supply. And I call forth now to be surprised by the Spirit in a way that I could have never dreamt. I call forth miracles to be ordinary, right here, right now. I'm so grateful to to see worldwide now and inviting you now to join with me in the collective energy of the worldwide to see that until all of us are safe, none of us are safe. Encouraging you when you go out, cover the nose to the mouth. There's nothing to be embarrassed about to have consideration for our fellow humans. And I know that life is good, and so I see where people are imprisoned unjustly, let them be free. I see that where there's food that's needed, there are so many people who need food right now. In America, the richest country in the world, let food and supply reach those in need. Let homes reach those who do not have homes. Let us bless all the people who have ever entered our back uh, shelter area, knowing that they are good and very good, they are supplied. See any injustice in your mind right here and right now is corrected for you have that power and I call it forth. I call forth for the peace that passes human understanding to be made shown and known right here and right now. And I call forth for any crooked pathways to be made straight. I know we have two or more gathered and we have activated that same Christ consciousness right here and right now and it must be done. And with a grateful heart, I release my word to the law of life knowing indeed it is fulfilled, simply because I have spoken it, I have affirmed it, I have declared it, and I am allowing it. And as Ernest Holmes would say now, I'm just going to walk around with great expectancy that it's true, that it's so, and that it's done. And together we say, and so it is. Amen. Ashe. I release... There was a time in my life Thought I had to do it all by myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient Didn't know the love of God was at hand Now I can say If you are discouraged Struggling just to make You gotta let it go, let it all go. This is what 